Listener-supported St. Gabriel Catholic Radio AM820 brings you Dominican Dimensions, a half hour of lively discussion about Catholic issues from a Dominican perspective, featuring the friars from St. Patrick Church in Columbus. And now, Dominican Dimensions. Welcome to the Dominican Dimensions, a lively half hour of discussion about Catholic issues from a Dominican perspective. My name is Father Stephen Dominic Hayes, and I'm a friar at St. Patrick Parish in Columbus. Today I'm joined in the studio by Father Stephen Alcott. And uh, discussion today, uh, and Father, this was a topic you considered, uh, was practical penance. But before we get there, let's pray. Hail Mary, full Full of grace, grace, the Lord Lord is is with thee. Blessed Blessed art thou thou among women, and blessed blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God, pray pray for for us sinners, sinners, now now and at the the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. So, Father, uh, as I said, this is sort of your uh, idea. Mm -hmm. Um, Where where shall we start? Maybe definitions are good, especially in this particular area where I think the word penance has a number of meanings in people's mind. Right, right. Penance can be a sacrament. There's the sacrament of penance, also known as confession, or the sacrament of reconciliation. Uh, Penance is a practice for every Christian. Um, Penance can also be a virtue, so maybe, Father Hayes, you could talk about how is penance a virtue? Well, it, uh, penance is one of those things, St. Thomas Aquinas says, that marks the Christian life. Mm-hmm. In other words, uh, the, the definition of penance might be the turning towards God and the turning away from sin, and habitually, because mm-hmm. we're talking about a virtue. Right. Right. So, And when one does this, uh, there's a, a, a natural destruction of the power of sin. But it's a grace virtue, which means it doesn't happen apart from grace. Hmm. So, if you're so, it therefore it can be seen that the entire Christian life is, in one sense, the practice involves the practice of this particular virtue. Mm -hmm. That penance is about moving in the direction of Jesus and and the the Father's will and the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a trinitarian thing, and then we're constantly turning away from the darkness, constantly rejecting the pattern and power of sin. In our life. Mm -hmm. And so this can be on a a variety of levels, practice on a variety of levels. Mm -hmm. So as that's that I would say is the is the virtue. Now the other thing about this is that if you're not practicing penance, strictly speaking, then you're if you're adrift, then you're not actually practicing the faith. So it it marks the life, is a virtue which marks the life of every Christian in the state of grace as they move towards God. Mm So penance is, is a turning toward God, turning away from sin. Um, does uh, I, I know in, in, in Greek the word for repent is, is usually, in the, in the Scripture, is metanoia, mm-hmm. to, to change one's mind. It's, right. a, it's, it's a turning. Yeah. Um, is that the same meaning in, in the Latin? Um, I guess maybe practically it's the same concept. It's the same concept, except I think even... When we talk about metanoia, we're talking about changing the noose, mm-hmm. okay, which is not just like a changing uh, – I, I change my, my mind about a particular proposition. Mm-hmm. It is put, put on, as St. Paul talks about, a whole fresh new way of thinking mm-hmm. in Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. which means that there will be an acceptance of a path of life in Jesus Christ and a rejection of the life outside of Christ. Right. And I might suggest this is the same uh, – the same kind of renunciation you see Abraham doing. You renounce the pattern of life that is characteristic of a worldly way of life, and that means changes. You know, mm-hmm. there are going to be changes in your behavior if you do this. Mm-hmm. You can't, you cannot uh, put God and love of money together. You mm-hmm. cannot love both God and serve both God and mammon. There is the uh, the rejection of sin, including those patterns of sins which are acceptable in your social class or culture or life. You know, I mean, 19th century, dueling was part of uh, uh, culture for a lot of people, both in this country and abroad, you know, but people like Catholic students were forbidden from joining, say, the dueling societies and German universities, you know, Mm -hmm. and over here, you know, if you died in a duel, you were not given Christian burial in 19th century, you Mm -hmm. know. Now, uh, dueling is not that much of a problem right now, (laughs) but abortion is, and so abortion will have has traditionally had extra strictures precisely because it's a favorite sin about which the general culture seems to be mm-hmm. um, 
have a poor conscience about, doesn't see mm-hmm. the evil of it. Uh, and so you leave you leave the pattern of, of sin. You're turning your back on that, not only your sins, but the sins of your culture. Mm-hmm. And then the third thing would be to go into the land that God shows you, which is to be led moment by moment in humility into the will of the Father, to live, in other mm-hmm. words, the life of Jesus, imitating him in this radical humility where he does, he never does his own will if that is a will which is apart from the Father's will. Mm. Right. I think humility is such an important part of penance and repentance and conversion, because the very fact that you would change direction mm-hmm. assumes, presumes that you're turning because you realize the way you're going is the wrong way, right. and you're submitting yourself mm-hmm. to another, you know, whose way um, you place as 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 more authoritative than your own, mm-hmm. uh, and that's and that's humbling. Uh, it's it's humbling to to take upon ourselves sometimes practices that that are difficult practices that um, go against our, our interest, you know, or mm-hmm. our momentary desires. Uh, but, but humility is, is an absolutely necessary foundation for that. And the loneliness uh, the, uh, will be seen insofar as we practice the works of penance. Mm-hmm. So for instance, traditionally when we get to Lent, uh, we have, you know, fa- prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Mm-hmm. And each of these represents a, Way that the ancient church and has has continued to have a uh, a vision of how we make those renunciations. So, uh, one thing that you had to learn as a discipline in the early church was fasting, because the mm-hmm. pagans don't fast. Mm-hmm. Pagans grab all the gusto they can. You know, they were consumer society. And now, does this sound familiar? <laughs> okay, certainly. But Jesus is actually sort of radical. He says, you know, how can the the people? They, he was reproach because his disciples in his lifetime in, in, on earth did not fast. And he says, well, how can they fast when the bridegroom's still with them? But in the mm-hmm. day, he says, they, the bridegroom's taken away, they assuredly will fast. Right. Which means if you don't have a habit of fasting of some kind, it sounds like you're not practicing Christianity. Mm-hmm. And that's something in our comfort-loving, um, spiritualizing kind of culture that is not... I, I think a, a truth well received. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so penance is turning toward God, turning away from sin. It's a virtue, uh, a, a habit that we can practice as part of the Christian life. It de- it destroys sin. Um, and since our topic was practical penance, maybe we could get practical and just talk about some examples of of practical penances that that we can take on. Practical mm-hmm. instances of that of that turning toward God, turning away from sin. I know we were talking about um, fasting and mm-hmm. and uh, and about uh, you know avoiding certain foods mm-hmm. you know for the sake of God maybe also for the sake of just our bodily well being mm-hmm. and I, I believe there's an incident that happened today. Uh, oh well, that, actually that's sort of interesting, you know, because many of these this this turning involves uh, it involves all parts of the human being. So mm-hmm. we have a physical level. We have a, on the level of soul, there's a psychic and emotional quality to our life. And then there's in the pure spirit meaning and purpose. Mm-hmm. So there's, so yeah, so part of the penance is dissecting these things. Mm-hmm. And it's not necessarily complicated. So, I mean, not necessarily uncomplicated. So for instance, today, now I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I have a weight problem. You know, I've had a weight problem since I was five. Mm-hmm. And so I'm constantly working on that. So I... I was busy making my lunch out of yogurt and blackberries today, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, some kind person sends over a pizza for the benefit of the fathers. It's a cheese <laughs> pizza, so it's even meatless, you know. So mm-hmm. I uh, and on the Friday, and so um, anyway, so I'm looking at this and I read it through my little app that tells me, you know, what foods are are more problematic than others. And yes, as expected, the pizza is problematic. You know, I mean, it, I could right. take one slice. You know, it would. It would, you know, I, I, but, um, but I kept with my, my yogurt and, and the blackberries, you know, mm. for a happier, stricter life, you know. Uh, fortunately, Father Peter came in, you know, and, and assisted <laughs> us with that. He He's, took one for the team, right? I actually, he took four, but that's. <laughs> he took four for the four team. team. <laughs> but he has a much better constitution and metabolism and it works like, it works out a lot. So, um, but he, here, it was interesting that when, 
it wasn't until I'd said no to it that I was able to fe- look at the emotions underneath it. Mm-hmm. Because when you do something like that, you've got a habit like this where food medicates emotions, then you, you, don't, you don't see the emotions at all. Mm. So it was interesting. I mean, am I, for instance, not participating in something the brothers will be participating in? Mm-hmm. There's a desire for all of us to to share in those things that make us, you know, one in a community. Mm. So there's that interesting feeling. And the other feeling was, am I rejecting the kind gift offered by? Am I dissing the person who gave us this gift? And you know, both are sort of temptations in the direction of indulgence. Mm-hmm. And they're you know. But as I said, I didn't, we didn't even see the emotions until I said no, which means I can work on those emotions and see, well, those are, those are I wouldn't really be doing either of those things, mm. you know, by refusing a slice of pizza. So what I'm saying is, you know, it's much more complicated when you get into the nitty gritty. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to sort of dissect your motivations. You have to see what's going on. As you practice the penance, it will reveal things about yeah, your own heart right. to you. And what's going on in there? As I said many times, where with where we're talking about media use of media, food, drink, mm-hmm. uh, recreational drugs, we are in fact medicating mm-hmm. these emotions, which are tying us to a way of life that's inconsistent with Jesus, mm-hmm. you know, and the moderation and the virtue you see in Him who became man for us and provides a perfect template of what it is to be human. Right. You're listening to The Dominican Dimensions, a half hour of lively discussion about Catholic issues from a Dominican perspective. My name is Father Stephen Dominic Hayes, and I'm a friar at St. Patrick Parish in Columbus. I'm joined in the studio today by Father Stephen Alcott. We've been discussing a a practical approach to penance. Yeah, as you were saying, Father, about um, how when we don't practice penance, we kind of go on autopilot sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know. When we do practice penance, even in relatively minor things, we start to get insights. We start to be able to see, oh, okay, you know, why am I doing this anyway? You know, it it, it does open the, you know, uh, open up the hood, as it were, mm-hmm. you know, of what's going on, you know, in our in our desires, in our, our emotions, our needs, and our wants. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that's that's something that, that can be a, kind of a hidden benefit of of, of penance. Uh, it, until we try penance, often we don't realize, you know, what what we're doing, why we're doing, or how difficult it is mm-hmm. to give up something. Sometimes we think, oh, that'll be no problem to give that up, and we try it, and it's not so easy. That's right. Um, one one thing that uh, um, has been gaining uh, a lot of traction among among some uh, Catholic men is is a program called Exodus ninety. It's mm-hmm. a program that I believe originally was developed. Um, uh, for for seminarians mm-hmm. um, who are preparing to come into the seminary and you know needed a little bit of a transition to get used to you know the discipline and the life of mm-hmm. of, of of the seminary you know and it's it's a program that uh, a number of men have done you know and are, some of them are doing in our own parish uh, and but it's something that can you know it's there's some things you give up. There's some ascetical practice. There's some mm-hmm. things you take on, you know, trying to make a holy hour for every day, right. getting enough sleep, you know, getting some good exercise mm-hmm. and also the sense of fraternity, making sure you, you meet with your fraternity of the other men who are doing this with you and check in with someone who's your anchor, someone who's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, who you kind of check up on each other to, mm-hmm. to just, to just be accountable to in a sense. Mm. But it's amazing what for, 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 you know, for these men, uh, it makes them realize, like, this is a challenge, but, hey, you know, this is making me realize, you know, what's what's going on in my life. And and through it all, there's a little reflection every morning that, that's from the book of Exodus. So mm-hmm. the whole theme of it is, you know, think of yourself as like the Hebrews enslaved mm-hmm. in Egypt. You're trying to get out of the right. slavery. You know, and each day there's a wonderful meditation about um, how, you know, how you can see yourself— as part of that exodus, you know, going from one place where you're held captive to, you know, the promise of God, you know, which sets you free. And it sounds like basically you're doing, as I mentioned, the renunciations of Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, mm-hmm. that um, you're leaving up the life of Ur of the Chaldees or Babylon, mm-hmm. you're leaving ba- the right. Babylon of our, our culture, to put on a new culture that is specifically 
you know, Christian that has all these parts of it, you know, that gives up, say, the attention to the media mm-hmm. and the the favorite sins that people use to right. relax with. You have a, a psychological approach where um, you are actually putting on a new, fresh way way of thinking. You know, it's a deepening of your original Christian commitment, but then um, you're you're hammering it down with certain practices, mm-hmm. you know, and a community that is also interested in practicing this. You're giving up mm-hmm. the old family uh, where you learned your sins, and you're putting on a new family that's teaching your right. virtues. Right, and that you know? community is so important. And and some men find out that wow, like now that I'm not watching TV and media right. and, and all this, I've got this time on my hands, yeah. you know, that I didn't know I had, That's right. you know, and I can spend this time in ways mm-hmm. that are good, you know, with my family yeah. or, or doing good reading or, or things that I, I know right. I've wanted to do, but just and in didn't a think I had way, time. In mm-hmm. a focused way. One of the great th- problems that I think in our, so- in our society is the tendency to want to be constantly multitasking, mm-hmm. which in fact makes us less efficient at everything. Mm-hmm. It stresses us more, you know, the studies have shown this kind of function produces more cortisol, the stress hormone in the brain. Mm-hmm. And it enables us to avoid actually focusing on relationships, not only relationships with other people, but when you talk about prayer with God. I've met people who will say, oh, I pray every day, Father. I pray while I'm driving to work every morning. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I'm just asking you, if you had a friend who would only talk to you when they could be doing something else at the same time. Would you count them as much of a friend? <laughs> right. You know, right. rather, would you, if you have an important thing to say to them, don't you sort of require a focused conversation? Right. And, and so what you're talking about, this program introduces people to, to doing one thing at a time right. in a focused way. Mm-hmm. Where the, and, and that is a very good way to live, you know, mm-hmm. the, to, uh, to focus on the moment, whether it's Drinking a cup of tea and enjoying mm-hmm. what God has put in front of you as a goodness, whether it's having a conversation with family, you know, whether it's prayer to God, mm-hmm. you know, something in which you can actually sit down and focus. You know, the same thing would be, to, I think, things like reading the scriptures. We can always listen to a, bo- a book in the background. I'm not saying that it has no value. But I'm saying there needs to be time when you can focus on these things, you know, on prayer, on the various fastings, on the Acts of charity, acts of love, selflessly. Mm-hmm. So we we do them more and more for God's sake and not their own. That's why we sort of you know we do have a tendency sometimes to mix dieting and fasting, and they're really two completely mm-hmm. different things. Right. Fasting is all about uh, dieting is all about me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> fasting for Christians, I would say, is to enter into the life of Jesus, who suffered for us, who fasted mm-hmm. for us. Mm-hmm. You know, to taste some of His. A hunger and thirst upon the cross to understand what it was for our sake to f- to face the devil armed with his fasting mm-hmm. uh, in the desert because we're going to find ourselves in all those situations too, and we can use his tools, his example, his pattern to guide us deeper into a a richer imitation and following of his life. Right. Yeah. That's a, that's a significant point there. You know the example of the difference between dieting and fasting, you know, that, that fasting and penance is done for the sake of God, for the right. sake of turning toward God. Um, you know, I used to, when I was a kid, when we'd have to give up something for Lent, I thought it was purposely making yourself miserable so that the chocolate would taste better at <laughs> Easter in your Easter basket. Right. You know? yeah. But that, I realize that's not really the reason, you know. Um, I, I really see penance now as, as a kind of, you know, a setting free, mm-hmm. uh, going where you otherwise couldn't go, mm-hmm. um, being able to say no to one thing so you can say a bigger yes. Right. You know, whenever we say yes to something, we're saying no to something else. You know, if yeah. it has to do with time or any kind of finite commodity or money, right. when you say yes to something that you buy, you're saying no to something else that you mm-hmm. could buy. When you say yes to something with your time, you're saying no to something else you could spend your time on, you know. And, and so when you say that no of penance, you know, to something that you're turning away from, you're able to say yes. You right. know, you're able to go. I, I love the image of backpacking. You know, people go backpacking, mm-hmm. contrary to what some of my fellow Dominican friars think, you know, mm-hmm. not to go on a death march. <laughs> 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 not because they, you know, they want to make themselves miserable. They go backpacking because there's some places you just can't get right. on a paved road. Some mm-hmm. absolutely gloriously beautiful places yeah. on this planet where you can't get mm-hmm. by following a paved road. You have to mm-hmm. go off the beaten path. Right. And to do that, you just have to give up a few things temporarily. 
But it's worth it, yeah. I, I think. There's also the the function that these small things prepare us for to do greater things. Just as mm-hmm. if you know, I probably can't you know bench press 350 pounds, but I could probably work up to it. Mm-hmm. But I would have to work up by degrees, right? You know, and this is how these virtues work. I think you know, we're changing small behaviors little by little, so that we become eventually heroes of virtue. Mm-hmm. You know, which is what saints are. So right. to move small in a direction of being able to say no to the body. So when we are really, you know, have to say no to the body and its will, mm-hmm. uh, we can't. I mean, this is, frankly, I mean, the path of the martyrs, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, mm-hmm. right. uh, grace, is, grace is the bottom of everything, but there is a sense in which uh, justice in preaching, a good preacher should be well adapted, mm-hmm. you know, it should be studious and preparing the preaching, be a... Uh, one who can speak in the midst of confusing times the eternal truths of God, you know, by dint of study and, and his own research, as well as the grace of God. So in these virtues, it's about turning towards uh, the Lord with all ha- your heart and your mind and your soul mm-hmm. and your spirit and your body and moving in a direction of the imitation of Christ who represents, again, the fer- perfect. He's the basis of our own anthropology of what it is to be a human being as Christians. You know, he is shows us in the body, in the soul, in the, in the spirit, where we should be mm-hmm. in his own humanity. Right. And uh, one other good thing I think that's important to, to discuss is, is that the virtue has its extremes and its balance in the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can be a little different for different people. Mm-hmm. Um, if we try to, many people have had this experience in Lent, you know, if you try to take on too much at once Mm -hmm. in a fit of enthusiasm and and ambition, uh, you know, after a while you can't sustain it and you just crash. Right. Uh, and often you end up, you know, really discouraged. Right. Um, on the other hand, you know, sometimes we, you know, we can do more than Mm -hmm. we think, but it seems to me that, um, if we see virtue as building something up. Mm-hmm. Little by little, yeah. that's a very important concept, as you were saying. Mm-hmm. You know, we, uh, you know, we don't start at ten. You know, we start at one, right. and we work our way up to ten, like weightlifting, for example. Sure. Um, otherwise, you'll you'll seriously injure yourself. Yeah. Um, right. And uh, I, I often think that in Lent, um, it's good to pick something that you can, mm-hmm. you can maybe even continue after Lent. It won't be right. so onerous and burdensome that, you know, you know that that you'll. That you can't say, well, maybe I, I, I like this. I like the freedom right. I've experienced in this area of my right. life. I want to keep this up. Indeed, I think that's what Lent's for. It's to give us a limited time to try things mm-hmm. and see. Because you're right. If this is true virtue, then why would you want to see be less virtuous right. when Lent right. is over right. and exactly. we enter into Easter? You know. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, sometimes I think you can do a, a period of intense, it's sort of like intensity workouts, which mm-hmm. are supposed to be actually much better for you. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. short, brief uh, experiences with with something. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, you know, I'm from an Irish family. On Good Friday and Ash Wednesday, we have the tradition of a black fast, just bread and water, mm-hmm. one meal, bread and water. But you can have as much as you need because a guy who works at an office desk needs something different from a guy who's hauling bricks right. all day. Right. But, uh, but, you know, one day, you know, mm-hmm. if you have sufficient bread, it should be able to get through it. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Now, so, and now you can't do that on Wonder Bread. There, d- this does require certain instruction. <laughs> true, you know, I usually true. say three big bagels. You know, let that be a portion for the day for most people. But um, you don't have to eat it all, but you have it, and mm-hmm. you can keep it. And if you need something in the evening, do try for one meal. But that's okay. You're you're certainly fasting. You're for, you're fasting even more than the church requires. Now, I do think our our regulations are minimum standards at right. this point. Right, and I think their purpose. Nothing. But if you do experiment, especially with physical penance, I think you have to, I think you have to get advice and you have to enter in right. tradition. The Desert Fathers are very clear about this. Mm-hmm. You know that they say you can fast for, if you want fast intensely, do it just for a short period, because otherwise you're going to hurt yourself and you ruin your health. You know this, the same way with, uh, I think most of these uh, these penances, you need to if you're going to do something intense, then just do it for a short time and get advice. You know, mm-hmm. I've had people come to me and ask to do things like wear hair shirts. They're still available, apparently. But I usually say, <laughs> no, but I'll say, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't think that's really what you need right now. Because physical penance says 
the spiritual danger of making you feel, oh, I'm so good. I'm so, mm. I'm such a great person. And all of a sudden, you're feeding your pride while wearing a hair shirt. Right. And that's right. what you want. So if you do, if you enter into something, I do think you need to have a, a director or or somebody that you can talk to at least to make sure that you're doing this in a some there's something moderate about that, and you're and that you're mm-hmm. responsible to somebody else for it. Right. You know that you're accountable to somebody else right. for it, so that you are not the arbiter of your of your penance yourself, but you stay in the mind within the mind of Holy Church. Right. That's so important to have that um, someone that you know, someone you can talk to about this, not someone that you're trying to compete with by any means, right. but yeah. someone who who can help you and and encourage you, but mm-hmm. also help help you stay balanced. If there's right. you know that you're not you're, you're not being you know, too easy on yourself, but you're also not being too hard on yourself. Right. You're not setting yourself up for, for crashing and burning. Yeah. Which is why the communities you have, whether it's a religious order, mm-hmm. whether it's the general, you know, as sometimes even a an ethnic culture provides certain of these, tradi- certain wisdom about these things, certainly programs like the Exodus program you're talking mm-hmm. about. You've got a community where if you're accountable right. to the others, then they'll tell you if you're off the beam. Either too lax or too or too rigid. Right. And really, it's, it's a team approach. You're in it together. Right, exactly. You're not competing or actually helping each other. Right, exactly. And that is a good thing. So, um, so in summary, um, what advice can we give the listeners about all this? Uh, just remember that dependence is really part of the Christian life. It's a turning toward God, turning away from sin. It's a virtue that destroys sin mm-hmm. that we can build up as a habit. Uh, it's something that um, that can give us insight about ourselves, can help us grow in self-knowledge. Mm-hmm. It requires humility yeah. um, to accept the obedience of Christ. Christ is our model. Um, Christ also is our great help. Uh, and it's something that ideally is, is, is taken up uh, in community with someone else, someone who can help us yeah. and advise us. Let's end now in prayer, invoking our Father, St. Dominic. O light, o light of the, of the church, church, teacher of truth, rose of patience, ivory of chastity, freely you have poured forth the waters of wisdom, preacher of grace, unite us with the blessed. Amen. Amen. Dominican Dimensions is a production of listener-supported St. Gabriel Catholic Radio AM820. Archives of Dominican Dimensions and all of our locally produced programs are available at stgabrielradio.com. 